Today, Sunday, is the United Nations Day. The day is usually marked on 24th of October every year to commemorate the anniversary of the day in 1945 when the UN Charter entered into force. UN Day offers the opportunity to amplify the common agenda of the member nations and reaffirm the purposes and principles of the UN Charter that have guided the organization for the past 76 years. Here in Nigeria, the theme for this year's edition is Building Resilience Through Hope to Recover from COVID-19 and uh, Rebuild Sustainability ability and uh, respond to the needs of the planet and joining us to discuss the United Nations Day celebration in Nigeria and its urgency as it affects education in the country is the UNICEF representatives in the country, uh, Peter Hawkins. Uh, good to have you with us, Peter, and uh, you're welcome to Newsday. Now, let's talk Great about... Great to be here. Thank you very much for having me. All right, very good. Now, let's talk about the essence of the UN Day in Nigeria. Uh, how have you assisted the Nigerian government from the pandemic recovery so far? I, I think the relationship between the United Nations and the, and the uh, Nigerian government is marked by Nigeria's commitment to multilateralism. And as you said, it's 76 years since the, um, the declaration that uh, declared the United Nations. It's focused on uh, human rights, peace, development, but mainly also on people's aspirations. And this is where uh, a lot of what uh, happens here in Nigeria is so important. Uh, the government of Nigeria's commitment to uh, multilateralism and the way that the UN has been working as one to help Nigeria to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic has been a critical milestone in, in how we have been able to work. So it's working on trying to understand what the pandemic uh, was doing, uh, how, it, how it evolved in the country. Secondly, how the people themselves were responding, you know, wearing masks, uh, socially distancing uh, and washing the hands. And that has been a, a, a big part of containing the, the, the virus in Nigeria. And then now, more recently, uh, around the, the vaccine and how uh, we've been able to support the MPHCDA and the Ministry of Health in ensuring that uh, Nigeria is able to start the vaccination program and successfully co complete it towards the end of 2022. But there's more than that. There's also, as you've pointed out, the resilience. How do you build the resilience of the communities? One of the biggest impacts uh, that uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has had on Nigeria is the economic recession. This stems from the price of uh, um, oil, the global price of oil, the global uh, economic downturn, and then the, the economic uh, constraints that Nigeria itself has been faced with. So now there are 105 million people in poverty in Nigeria. Um, and, and this really does mark a, a, a milestone. So how do you build that resilience? How do you, does the United Nations help uh, the Nigerian government build back economically and socially so that people can resume their daily lives at the same sort of level as they were before the pandemic? Indeed, Peter. Now, let's talk about the issue of insecurity, which is still a uh, big challenge in northern uh, uh, parts of Nigeria and not elsewhere as well, uh, resulting in high incidence of internally displaced people here. And uh, the children are the most vulnerable. How would you assess UN efforts in this regard, uh, with uh, references to education as well? The, the, the insecurity has multiple facets, as you said. You know, the, one of the uh, main elements is the insurgency in the northeast of Nigeria. In 2015, 2016, the Nigerian government invited the United Nations in to come and, and work in Maiduguri uh, in, a, in a very large you know, the third biggest uh, humanitarian program that, uh, uh, that, that, that the UN is, is embarked upon. Um, th there, it's looking at the humanitarian response, but it's also the peace and security, and then finally the, the development uh, initiatives. And it's where the three, the nexus of the three comes together, where it has been the most successful. And the stabilization programs that UNDP are running, um, food uh, and food insecurity, nutrition, health, and so on, which uh, all the agencies and the, the non-governmental organizations have, have successfully been working with the government to alleviate the stresses and the vulnerability of the uh, internally displaced people, but also look to see how we can help build their resilience so that they can counter the insurgency themselves. 
Nick Peter, now still talking about the region's uh, government, especially uh, those in the north. How's the relationship like uh, with the UN? I think the, the United Nations and the governors, whatever state, whether in the north, south, central, uh, is, is exceptionally good. The belief in multilateralism, the mutual support that the United Nations and the, and the governors have uh, in, in, in the various parts of the country is, is there to be seen. And their programs working on health, working on education, looking at economic development, looking at the development plans, uh, all these things are building up the capacity at state level to ensure that the services delivering delivered to people and especially to children uh, are, are effective. And I think the, the critical issue there is how to build up sustainable efforts, sustainable services, sustainable protection uh, frameworks, sustainable elements that ensure that the governors and, and the governorate are able to continue those programs beyond that. So technical assistance, uh, working with them on, on their, their plans, as well as helping deliver around, say, for example, immunization, which uh, UNICEF and WHO do so successfully. Very good, Peter. Now, let's delve into the issue of uh, environmental concerns. Uh, COP26 and, of course, Glasgow uh, is grabbing the headlines globally. How is the UN uh, helping Nigeria protect its environment and ensuring it abides by uh, global efforts to reduce adverse climate change? And obviously, the Secretary General is, is very uh, um, central to COP26 and, and everything that the climate change debate has, has held. Here in Nigeria, they're very uh, they're different things. The uh, in, International Organization for um, Weather and, and, and uh, um, uh, the IOM uh, are working very much in places like Port Harcourt to look at climate change and the impact on climate change, environmental degradation, which in, in the Delta region has, has been a prominent factor over the past 10, 15 years, um, working in other parts of the country to ensure that there are alternatives to and building up the resilience of the people so that, that they can uh, look forward to a, a better planet. Uh, but I think one of the main uh, issues uh, that Nigeria is faced with is has this demographic bulge with youth uh, there are 65 million uh, young people between the ages of 10 and, and uh, uh, 24. Uh, and it's that group of people who, if they were, if we're looking at their future, so beyond 2030 or 2030 and beyond, um, how they will uh, receive the planet, how they will look after the planet, and how they will be an integral part of how Nigeria itself looks forward to a, a prosperous future. Indeed, Peter. And still talking on the issue of uh, climate issues, uh, COP26 is widely regarded as a last-ditch effort to save the planet uh, from man's activities regarding the environment. So from a general point of view, how is the UN assisting here? Uh, it's one thing to have uh, countries uh, make pledges, but how do you get them to commit and act on those pledges? I think that Nigeria globally is a very important uh, country in, in that debate and holding other countries uh, to account. But it's also important that it, it walks the talk itself. And uh, this is where the United Nations is working very closely with the government of Nigeria at different levels and in different places to see how Nigeria itself can uh, meet its own uh, uh, commitments or obligations towards a, a green, greener planet. This is a country that has plenty of sun, has uh, wind and, and water, and how can you use that as alternatives to um, generators, fuel-based uh, 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 generated power, um, using gas power and other power to, to be able to lessen the, the, the CO2s in, in, in the country. It's a country also which has a massive amount of vegetation um, and how you can use the vegetation to offset some of the um, uh, emissions that, that, that take place and make its contribution. But I think at the end of the day, uh, there's a lot that we can do around uh, safeguarding Nigeria's future cleansiness, you know, around plastics, around youth understanding, so uh, climate resilient uh, discussions at school and understanding what, what, what the climate and the planet is doing, bringing that into the curriculum. These are important small steps, but important steps to help Nigeria think through its uh, uh, 
uh, obligations to a greener Nigeria for the future. Uh, indeed, Peter. Now, it's one thing to mark the day, UN Day in Nigeria, but what comes next uh, beyond uh, marking that day? Well, I, I think the, the important thing is, is the, the SDGs in 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, working towards that and leave no one behind. And Nigeria is a very important player in, in, uh, allow, um, in ensuring that the world could reach sustainable development goals uh, by 2030. And I think the United Nations and the uh, government of Nigeria are working very hard to uh, see how Nigeria can meet uh, the, uh, the 2030 uh, um, SDGs from 1 to 17, um, but also uh, leave, one no be, uh, leave no one behind. And let's not, remember, uh, let's not forget, the, at the top of the United Nations is a very uh, able and committed uh, Nigeria in, in the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, uh, who actually penned uh, the, the SDGs. Uh, so it really does come from the experience that Nigeria is faced with and the United Nations is committed to helping Nigeria meet uh, the, the SDGs. And we're doing so as much as we can in the different elements of our, of our work and uh, uh, the organizational capacity. Indeed, Peter. And on a last note, uh, just before you go in briefly, how has Nigeria, uh, Nigerians themselves, uh, warmed up to uh, the good deeds of the UN uh, you know, in ensuring that your projects are being carried out? I really do think it's the other way around. I think we're here to serve the people uh, and the people have stood up. They're resilient. They are committed. Uh, one of the fantastic things about working in Nigeria is the initiatives that Nigeria um, em embark upon. Recently, we had something called the Generation Unlimited Challenge Fund and there were two teams that, that uh, went forward to the global um, uh, Challenge Fund, one from Lagos and one from Maiduguri. The Maiduguri team won the educa Global Educational Prize. That shows such uh, a capacity to adapt in a very difficult time, uh, the capacity to, to influence uh, others, but more than anyone else, the, the ability to um, be reflective and, and take things forward uh, in whatever situation they are, they are in. It's that that shows the, the future of Nigeria is strong. What we need to do is build that capacity from uh, the people's level and indeed, upwards to be able to take that Very forward. good. Peter Hawkins, UNICEF representatives in Nigeria. Many thanks for your thoughts on those issues on the essence of UN Day.